Hey guys, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife video for you. Now, there's not going to be a lot of specs and stuff on this knife, but I'm going to tell you a little story and perhaps give you a little warning. So I had the kids out, I guess it was Saturday, we went out to do the papers and sometimes after the papers, especially on a Saturday, we have no rush, we'll make a few other stops. And we stopped at Dollarama. Now, Dollarama is probably, and not probably, it's definitely the biggest dollar store in Canada. Uh, I don't know what the U.S. equivalent would be if you guys have Dollaramas in the U.S. or if it's, you know, under some other brand or something. But anyway, um, it's not Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree is a separate brand or, or a separate, yeah, separate entity. And uh, that's probably the second most popular dollar store. But Dollarama in Canada is by far the most popular. Anyway, uh, I go in there and they've got the camping stuff out and I find a knife in a dollar store. And I'm like... This is a new one on me. Maybe some of you watching have seen knives in dollar stores before. And if you have, I would love to hear about your experience, especially if you bought one and tried it out like I did with this one. But I couldn't resist. I had to go and buy one and try it out. And so I picked this guy up and uh, opened it up and I took a look at it. By the way, I will roll in a little clip of my son, Asher, at the end describing this knife for you. So stick around for that. He kind of gives a little bit of a description on it. Uh, but... I pick this up, get it out of the box, and I've gone ahead and, so the first thing I check out all the time is, you know, blade play side to side and up and down, and I will say this, it's, it's really, really solid. Now, <laughs> it's really, really solid because it is so tight that you cannot open this knife with one hand. You really can't. The thumb stud is massive, and it needs to be because you have to, you know, get a ton of leverage. And then, it actually functions a little like a um, traditional knife in that it has a, a second stop right here. So as you're opening the knife, it stops a second time right here, which is kind of interesting. And I'll tell you what's happening. I'll, I'll try to show you what's happening. First of all, this is a chisel ground knife. So even on really nice knives, I hate chisel grinds. I really, really do. Um, and I've given them a fair shake. I bought a couple chisel grinds and tried to use them, and I just hated everything about them. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, that said, uh, this knife would be bad even if it was a normal V grind. So we've got some kind of mystery steel up here that has an edge on it, although it is not the sharpest edge I've ever seen. And the serrations are especially bad. In fact, when they painted the serrations, they've they've actually put basically a coat of paint over them so that they actually won't cut anything. I'll get a piece of paper out here just to demonstrate. Now I've got the serrations and as you can see, you just can't cut. Now the, the other part of the knife will start to cut and then, but it's, as you can see, it's not sharp. It's quite a rough edge that you're getting out of that. Um, but at least there's a bit of an edge there. Now, as I say, it's not terribly sharp. I haven't done enough cutting with this to see how the edge retention is. I did, you know, a little bit of cutting. As soon as I realized it was a chisel grind, I knew I wasn't going to like how it performed cutting anyway. But, um, <laughs> so we, we've got a, a blade here that is passable but doesn't really cut very well. Okay, so that's kind of fail, fail number one, having a blade that doesn't really cut stuff. As you can see, if I got it just right, I could get it to cut that paper a little bit if I was super careful with it. Okay, but even, you know, it's not even very sharp out of box. So uh, that's number one. Second, we have a liner lock here. I mean, a frame lock, I'm sorry. Frame lock and a two-handed <laughs> opening knife and closing knife, by the way. Uh, if you try to open this one-handed, it is nigh unto impossible. Possible. Uh, it is really, really hard to open and close. So we have a lock and action here, pivot system, that also barely functions. And closing it is just as bad. Now I will show you one special feature that this knife does have. It's the only, as I was mentioning a second ago, it's the only knife I've ever seen that is a frame lock 
but also has a half stop here. And what's happening with the half stop is I'll try to show you, well, I can show you from here. So there's two screws here holding the clip on. And if you look down here, let's see if I can show you. You can barely see it there. Hold on, let's see if I got a flashlight. Okay, so let's shine the flashlight in and see if I can show you this. So if you look in there, there you go, you can see it now. You see that screw going right through and touching the blade. So what actually happens here is as you open the knife, that screw actually falls into the detent hole <laughs> and serves to stop the knife at the halfway point. Okay, and then you can open it up. Now, I will say this, guys. Um, let's get the, knife, the flashlight out of the way so it's not messing up our lighting. I will say this. Uh, this is one advantage is this is a very Canada legal knife. <laughs> There's no way you're opening this with one hand. In fact, you're hard pressed to open it with two hands. All right, so finally, we move down here to this stamped out frame and it is, again, about what you'd expect. Uh, I can actually flex this whole frame just by putting a little bit of pressure on it. So pretty weak. Now, perhaps the only argument we could make here is that someone is able to take this, take some steel and turn it into something resembling a knife for only four dollars. All right, so I've got to, I, that's the only thing I can say is four dollars Canadian, you got it, when you do the exchange, that's going to be like less than three dollars American. I guess not. It's going to be just a little over $3 American. But the point is, uh, by the time, you know, you, you make this knife and package it and ship it and stock it on a shelf, the cost to turn one of these out has got to be just a few pennies per knife. And so the only good thing I can sort of say about that is it's a testimony to modern manufacturing. How cheaply we can make something is kind of impressive okay so otherwise this is a knife that you really really should pass on they have another model in there and i thought about picking up both and kind of doing a comparison but uh, i didn't know if it was worth my time if you want me to go and pick up the other one again it's only four dollars so it's not going to hurt me any to go and pick it up uh, let me know in the comments down below and I can do that. For the rest of you, I'd love to hear what is the, the worst, sorriest example of a knife that you have ever experienced. Share that down in the comments below and where did you buy it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And now you know what you get for $4 in a folding knife. We'll talk to you later.